So we can start thinking about the reversibility of what we're doing in climate, right? Um, how much climate change have we committed to already? And we might ask ourselves if the concentration of greenhouse gases were held constant at present day levels, for how long would temperatures continue to rise? And we see that global temperature equilibrium would be reached only after centuries to millennia if radiative forcing were stabilized, right? So we're in this for the long haul. That doesn't mean that we can't curb emissions, that we can't limit warming. However, it does mean that right, we will experience warming for a very long period of time. Okay. Um, some aspects of climate will continue to change even if sur surface temperatures are stabilized. So for example, even if the surface air temperature stays constant, ocean thermal expansion will still continue. And this is because the ocean slowly takes up heat from the atmosphere. So the, temp the atmosphere and the ocean currently are not in equilibrium, right? The ocean is still slowly catching up by absorbing that heat. So even if we stop atmospheric warming, we will still see the ocean absorbing heat uh, and undergoing thermal expansion and thus also undergoing sea level rise. So we've been able to look at lots of different variables to look at um, right? Is it reversible? If so, over how long? Are there any thresholds that we expect? Um, could there be some abrupt change, right? What's going to happen? And I really, really like this table, so I'm going to zoom in on it, and I've color-coded it where green means good, blue means eh, okay, and red means bad. And what's really cool and what I found surprising is that it's pretty well balanced, right? I think we often focus on the really bad, the really scary with climate change, as we should, because we need to know what we're working for, what to avoid. But that also means we sometimes forget about the good and forget that, you know, there are some um, positive results from these models. So I'm going to go through some of those positive things. First, as we talked about, um, it doesn't look like there is going to be a, a collapse of entire ice sheets. Yeah, certain glaciers might collapse and cause sea level rise, but the entire ice sheets, those covering Greenland, those covering Antarctica, we don't think those are all going to collapse abruptly. abruptly. Same thing with um, permafrost carbon released. Yes, there's a positive feedback loop there. Yes, permafrost is melting, but it doesn't look like there's going to be some sort of abrupt collapse. Okay? So that's good. Um, also, there's quite a few things that we can reverse within our lifetimes, within years to decades. We can reverse the disappearance of Arctic sea ice in the summer. We can reverse long-term droughts, and we can reverse the changes in monsoonal circulation, right? That's awesome. Um, also, looking at the likelihood of change within the 21st, within the 21st century, it's very unlikely that AMOC will undergo a rapid transition. It's exceptionally unlikely that Greenland or the Atlantic or Antarctic ice sheets will collapse. It's very unlikely that methane will undergo catastrophic release. All right, so these are all really good things. Um, so right during the semester, if you start to panic, if you start to feel like, oh, there's no way that we can change anything, everything is lost, um, keep in mind that everything is an awful uh, the earth actually, uh, you know, has some fail-safe mechanisms that we can rely on. 